Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be doing uh, Causal Reality Off the Cuff number six. And in these episodes, we, um, we free me to just like say whatever wants to come into my mind. <laughs> um, I like to do shows like this every once in a while because... Um, because it, it helps me to tap into the wonder of this. I mean, like, you know, we have to continue, like, going through over the, reason, over the reasons why free will is impossible, you know, causality, the unconscious, why we can't be as happy or as good as we want, and that should tell you um, that we don't have a free will. But, yeah, in these shows, I'm just going to, like, and you want to know something? I mean, I've been, like, working, this is episode number 59, and... You know, I'm doing the Manhattan show once a week, 11 o'clock live, on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, Channel 56. Um, and so, like, yeah, I just, like, I want to talk about, I want to talk about, what, yeah, you know what, <laughs> what do I want to talk about? The, the surreal, the surreal nature of reality, you know, because, like, all right. If you don't understand the free wills and illusion, there's like 58 episodes before this that, that you know, they're all on um, my website, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, uh, causalconsciousness.com. But, but, all right, so this, I'm, I'm going to start off at least right now with just like, you know, considering what, what the reality is. The reality is you've got this universe that, I mean, it isn't the first time it's done this. It's... It's gotten us to to um, to believe something that is completely the opposite to the way things are, to the way the reality is. In other words, like um, you're all we're all familiar with the illusion of the Earth seeming flat. You know that it's you know long time ago before Columbus and all we yeah everybody thought yeah it's flat it's got to be flat. Nobody ever dreamed there was an orb. Um, Another illusion we have is that our world is completely motionless. You know, when the reality is we're hurtling through space, at least around the sun, our planet, at over 600,000 miles per hour, and our whole galaxy, Milky Way galaxy, is hurtling through the universe at however many <laughs> millions of miles per hour. Who knows? But the idea is like, there are illusions that, you know, the universe, because we don't have a free will, makes us, <laughs> makes us get the stuff wrong, you know, the flatness of the earth, the stillness of the earth and all, and then corrects us. And that's what it's done with us. I mean, like, we wouldn't be happy, we wouldn't have this illusion of free will um, unless the universe made us have it. You know, in other words, it would have been, I would guess, it would have been relatively easy for the universe God to to um to have us get it to have us like from from very early on say to ourselves wait a minute um you know my thoughts aren't up to me if I if, if you know if my thoughts were up to me I would be completely happy I would be completely good you know the world would be filled with completely happy good people and that it's because we don't have a free will that that we do things that we wouldn't do if we did have a free will you know so like so the idea is like so you've got the universe had us com has us completely confused about the second most fundamental fact of human nature the first being that we exist or the or human existence or whatever and and now now after I mean, our species has been on the planet several million years, but um, now, you know, it's getting, it's like, it's come the point where the universe is saying, all right, well, uh, for whatever reason, you know, we would hope it's a reason that, that involves our welfare. <laughs> the universe is saying, okay, it's time now that, that humankind, um, the human race, now be disavowed of this myth of free will and that's what's happening but but you know you, you can't you know the irony the surrealness of this is, is that you know it's the very universe that gets us to get it wrong to begin with and now is uh getting us to get it right um but it, it's much more than that i mean like you know that with a with a free will perspective 
it doesn't make sense. It might make us feel better in a certain way, although I, you know, I'm pretty convinced that we pay for those better feelings by much less harmonious personal relationships in a, in a society. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, the other reality is, yeah, that, you know, everything is a movie, you know. What I'm saying right now, what you're, anything we do, everything we will ever do has all been faded. Nothing is up to us. <laughs> and that's amazing. That's amazing. That's why I like to do these shows, all right, because, like, you know, because it just, like, gets me, you know, in touch with, with just the, the essence of what's going on here, you know. Everything is predetermined. We're just going along for the ride. The universe has us, you know, believe we're doing all this stuff on our own. Now the universe decides, all right, well, it's time that we, you know, learn how wrong the universe causes us to be because it's not our doing. And so what does that mean? So now, you know, people like me, because I'm, I'm like, I guess I'm the pioneer in this. I mean, there's other people that are working on this, but nobody as much as I, you know, have been doing, um, especially now, and, and also this is like, yeah, I gotta like, <laughs> I like to do this, because like, um, one, one of the things, all right, I don't have a free will, right, but it, it feels good to be a part of this, in other words, like this show, um, my book that I just published in December, the meetup that I, you know, created April 2010, these activities that I've been compelled to do, have been um, instrumental in in getting this issue out into the mainstream. Um, you know, the, the the Manhattan show it reaches. You know, Manhattan Cable, Time Warner reaches about half a million people. You know, there's about 1.5 million people on, living in Manhattan. Um, and what's the you know, the result of this has been that now Sam Harris, a uh, three times best-selling New York Times author just published a book on it. It's kind of like a short work, doesn't, you know, get into everything, but you have it now, you know, you've got, the issue is now in the mainstream, and now, like, with this Occupy Global Revolution 99% coming in, you know, through the next couple of months, it's going to be major. It's going to be, you know, very relevant to the fundamental principles upon which we um, create a new world, and that's pretty cool. So the idea is, like, so, yeah, so, like, from my per personal perspective, you know, I'm not the only one doing this. Again, um, the producer of my Manhattan show, The Messenger, and I, we're, we're certainly doing this. I hope Sam Harris stays with this. I hope he doesn't just write this book and go on to other things, because that's like, there was a few other philosophers, like Galen Strawson, who wrote a book a while back about this. But, you know, well, with the philosophers, a lot of times, you know, their problem is they don't reach out for the, to the mass audience. You know, um, there's another guy, Dirk Paraboom from Cornell. He gets the free wills and illusion. He writes about it, but these guys like charge forty, fifty dollars for their books. They're 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 really written for other philosophers. They're they're addressing to a great extent so many nonsensical arguments that shouldn't need to even be addressed. You know, because the because the issue of human will is just limited to to the issue of causality. In other words, if there's causality, free will is an illusion. Period. End of everything. <laughs> But, but, um, so yeah, so like, you know, we're doing this and it's because I understand that I don't have a free will that like, that instead of like creating, you know, feelings of, let's say, arrogance or pride or conceit that I'm, you know, doing this, which, which I consider a really great thing. I mean, like I start my shows with, with a quote from, you know, philosopher John Searle that says that, you know, the, the world getting, you know, the free will is an illusion would be bigger than Einstein and Newton and Copernicus and Galileo and Darwin. I mean, that's how big this is. And but like, you know, the cool thing is that like, I know that I don't have free will. So like, I'm kind of like in a great sense immune to, to like, you know, to feelings of conceit about this and stuff. So like, what am I left with? I'm left with like feeling really good that the universe has chosen me for this. And it's a much more humbling, uh, pleasant experience than the, than the kind of like arrogant, you know, wow, look what I did stuff. So, um, but all right, what else do I want to say? So, so, all right, so now, all right, so I, I'm just going to like, I'm going to go through what's been going on recently. Sam Harris just published his book, Free Will, Refuting Free Will. Um, I think it came out March 6th. 
we're we're taping this um april 2nd and i got to do a show on 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 his um book i i intended to do one today but um i've been working on some other things and and like just didn't have the time but but it's definitely important but the idea is like yes the guy's a best selling author three times new york you know three time new york times best selling author he's got readership it's out there now it's out there the the topic is finally out there you know the, this show and my book and the meetup have led to the have caused sam harris and others to take an interest so it's not just him now they're you know you've got like for example um the templeton foundation um i'm not sure what their politics are um i have a feeling they may be conservative i'm not sure but um, basically, they're they're pumping five million dollars into this issue of, of human will. Except that, you know, what they may be doing is like, there's some research that came out, you know, spurious research, just like research with an agenda, by a few people, um, Roy Baumaster, Kathleen Booz, I think a few others, and these are philosophers who I think originally were arguing that now. Um, Free will is, we do have free will, you know, it's a fact and all. They're arguing this. They finally have realized, no, we've lost that argument, you know, because now, now the research is saying, well, fine, free will is an illusion, but it's better for both the individual and for society to hold that illusion. It's better that we, like, live the lie of thinking that we have free will than, um, than living the truth. And I'm going to do a show on this, but might as well get into this here right now a bit. One of the ways they try to do this is like they'll set up an experiment where where they will kind of prime half, let's say, of their subjects that like that everything is deterministic and everything is faded and everything is preordained. Okay, you get half the of the subjects in the experiment to to kind of like read material or be taught material about that, and then you get the other half to. Um, to kind of like read material saying that, well, we still have a free will. Regardless of what anything, we still have free will. So what happens, like, then they're given some kind of a test and um, with the opportunity to cheat, okay? You can cheat on this test. And so what happens is, like, they find that the, the half or the, the subjects in the experiment that were primed to understand that free will is an illusion would cheat somewhat more than, than the ones who were primed to believe that we have a free will. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna refute this like very easily. Firstly, you know, why why this experiment is bogus? When you're teaching a group of people that free will is an illusion, that everything is predetermined, you can't stop at that, you know, because that's only half of the truth. The the other half of the truth that they conveniently ignore, and I'm sure researchers when they just you know destroy their findings <laughs> will just point out, is that nature, God, we, we tend to reward and punish ourselves based on what we do and don't do. That, that is the reality. And so, um, or, <laughs> so, so the idea is that, um, even though we don't have a free will, it's still wise to do the right thing. It's still wise to not, so in other words, if, if in this research, along with the first subject reading that, yes, we don't have a free will, if they would have also been primed that even though we have, don't have a free will, we tend to get rewarded or punished based on what we do, you know, then I would, I would suggest that, um, that their findings would just be, you know, would, would evaporate, would disappear, that, that they would find that there would be essentially no difference. Now, all right, yeah, this is cool. Another thing like... Um, Sometimes they don't, you know, again, their, their, their experimentation is very selective. If they were to, like, do an experiment of, let's say, um, very intelligent people versus not too intelligent people, and you can define intelligence in, you know, various ways or whatever, but just logical intelligence, you would find that the more intelligent the person is, the less likely they are to believe in free will, okay? You know, they should do that test. Another test they should do is experiment is like you take one group that believes in free will and another group that doesn't and and you know not that just because like a lot of times we don't even think about this you know it's not in our lives unless it's brought there so so 
basically you want to prime both groups. No, no, with, with this experiment, you would find that the people who believe in free will, when somebody does something wrong to them, you know, aggresses um, toward them in some way, they will very likely exact greater vengeance, you know, hold the person, just seek the other person's punishment, just wrongly, wrongly go after the other person much more so than the person who understands that free will is an illusion. Because if, again, if you believe that you have free will, you're going to hold other people much more accountable, you know, and, and you're going to seek to punish them. So again, if, if you, um, and so, so what these experimenters will find is probably, let's say, with, with crimes against other people or whatever, the more a person believes in free will, the, the more aggressive, the more vindictive, the more punishing or harming that person's attitude or behavior will be toward, toward whoever you know, hap would happen to be the target. Um, so yeah, all right. So now, again, like the cool thing. So the Templeton Foundation just pumped $5 million into this. And you know, I'm afraid that that they're going to try to just either muddy the waters, you know, like Exxon Mobil did with um, climate change, which, you know, fortunately they can't do that anymore, really. Um, they're going to muddy the waters or just like try to get people to, to say, well, let me tell you, living the lie that we have a free will is, 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 much, is a much better strategy. It's, it's just, it makes, you know, no, it doesn't. It's just it's living a lie is living a lie, okay? Um, and, and in this case, if it creates acrimony, if it creates um, hostility, vengeance, revenge, you know, if our holding ourselves and each other accountable just creates so much more conflict than we'd, other, we'd otherwise go through, you know, to the extent that we believe that everything's causal and our wills are causal and free will is a myth, um, we... We, we, we can create a much better world. We can create a much better world by overcoming this. All right. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes. Um, so what else? All right. I want to talk about Occupy because Occupy is going to be happening soon. Um, you know, the, the occupations throughout certainly this country and the rest of the world. Um, we've got a choice. We can go through Occupy with the free will illusion, in which case will everyone, you know, the 99% will be blaming the 1% for being greedy and selfish and, and cruel and evil, and the 1% will be blaming the 99% for, for not being the 99% or the 1%, whatever. And there's, you know, basically the, um, the situation, the, the era, the, this, 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 um, this evolutionary change we're going through, this, this, revolution of the 99% um, has, has um, you know, the, the implications of this question for it are, 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 um, couldn't be more important, couldn't be more significant. Um, you know, we have a choice. We, we can either, like, conduct this revolution with the perspective that's going to lead to a lot of blame seeking and and punishment seeking and all and, and and all that or we can go through this major global transition with a much more harmonious peaceful intelligent considerate truthful factual perspective you know the fact that we're not responsible for anything no one is everyone who's in prison and jail they're just unlucky you know, people who do things that, that we consider wrong, it's not up to them. When we do things that are right, not up to us. So what happens is when we conduct this revolution under this perspective, um, again, there's things to be done. Yeah, the 1% the can no longer have their, their inordinate power and then their inordinate wealth. You know, it just doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for anyone. Um, but we can do that without... Um, without what's happened in the past. I mean, um, when, when China went through their revolution, they killed millions of people. Um, you know, our, our American revolution, we, you know, there were a lot of people died in that. World War II, um, World War I, you know, each, and these, see, with these wars, with these major kinds of things that happened in the past where there was a lot of conflict, 
if those populations back then were were thoroughly conditioned, were thoroughly instructed and, and, and accepted and, and, and understood just the fact that free will is an illusion, you would not have had that, 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 um, that level of carnage, you know, that, that mass destruction, you know, because it would have made no sense. It would have made no sense for, for harming people who had absolutely no choice but to do what they did. Now, again, there's a difference between harming and equalizing, you know, with, with our current situation now with the, with the 1%, they've got way too much power, they've got way too much money, and they're destroying the world with it. You know, climate change alone will tell you that. And so, like, so, yeah, so um, to the extent that we get this, that um, the Occupy people will get this, the 1% get this, we can do this much more humanely, much more compassionately. Okay, um, what else do I want to say? Um, all right, I want, let me talk more about the Sam Harris book. Um, just a few comments. Um, well, what, what Harris has done is major. You know, again, he's brought it in. Uh, the, there have been several magazine articles um, that have come out since then. He's, done a, he's doing a talking tour. And some, some publications have tackled this. Forbes has tackled this. I think the Financial Times has tackled this. But from kind of like a conservative viewpoint, they're, you know, they're not like, they're, and I think it was Forbes. They, their article was, was quoting the Baumeister research. That, yes, free will is a myth, but we should believe the myth because like, cause it's wiser than believing the truth. So, but anyway, um, the major... You know the scientific magazines, uh, Scientific America. They've they've gone into this somewhat over the last year. I think to a great extent because of my work. But now, now Harris has taken it to to, to a different level. He's followed my lead in this, and now it's like you know, a lot of people are into this. A lot of people are going to be writing about this, and um, it's going to be cool. It's like um, the the media. It's no longer an open question. You know, they're they're still trying to like you know promote the uh, the meme that oh well you know it's not settled yet. Yes, it is settled. One plus one equals two. That's settled. Okay, <laughs> free will is an illusion. That's settled. So so what happens is like you've got the 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 media now has to find people who are really intelligent enough to, to, to understand this, to explain it. Because, I mean, it's not, it's really a no-brainer. Anybody who understands causality, that everything has a cause, all you have to understand is that to, to very easily understand that free will has to be an illusion. But, um, but, you know, a lot of, I guess, journalists and all, they, you know, they're probably intimidated by the physics, the quantum mechanical interpretations of, of, of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and then, you know, the wave particle duality, all that stuff, which really, you know, is inconsequential to this because quantum mechanics is causal. Because you wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to get into this. Um, but, yeah, so like, it's, it's going to be, um, it's a time for, um, for the media to to just um, to begin to understand not just the fact that free will is an illusion, but what that means. What that means on a personal level, like when if you're with your spouse or your kids or your friends or something, what it means to not to have no rationale to kind of like become angry with them if they do something wrong. You might become angry with the universe but you don't want to aggress against the people closest to you in your life. Uh, there may be other reasons why you might want to compete with others, you know, that's the way our society is structured. But when you do so from the perspective, the vantage of understanding the free will is an illusion, it's just more civil, it's more intelligent, it's, it's, it's kinder. Um, all right, about three minutes left. Um, you know what I want to do? Um, hopefully, I'll, I think I'm going to tape a few more episodes next week. And um, I want to introduce a section to this. If, if I get this done, I don't know. Basically, I, I, um, I want to bring an electric guitar in here and, and do some jamming. You know, because w- when I play electric guitar, I ba- basically improvise to either songs that I've wrote or, you know, written or songs that other people have written and, and sung and all, whatever. And so uh, I'm going to try to do this here and just like to show you because 
you know, basically I could say to you right now, what I'm saying to you is just coming into my mind. I, ha I have no idea where from where. Before I say it, I have no idea what I'm going to say in a sense. And it's only as I'm saying it that I know what I'm saying, you know. And this applies to everything. So, um, so with music, for example, if I'm improvising on guitar, yeah, I've gone through a lot of patterns. You know, these patterns um, repeated, they're in my unconscious. But when I'm playing to a song, you know, for example, if I were to play, you know, improvise to a song, do some lead, um, and let's say it's a one-minute song, then we replay it and ask me to do the exact same thing again. I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, and any, any guitarist, any musician who improvises would tell you, no, you can't do the exact same thing each time. If we had a free will, we'd be able to. So this would be, um, this is a, a kind of a cool, fun way of, of um, demonstrating this. But, um, all right, we got about a minute and a half left. Um, well, I hope that you're, you know, beginning to really understand the significance of this. I think you, you definitely understand the free will is an illusion now. At least I hope you do. But now, you know, at least these last few shows um, with the Occupy movement and revolution revving up, you know, through the spring, summer, and fall, I hope you're beginning to understand that this issue is of paramount importance to our current global situation we can again we can approach the revolution from the free will perspective and just like you know just go at each other <laughs> or we can um we can take the more intelligent truthful compassionate uh, perspective that we don't have a free will and then we, we do what we have to do in a much more civil way um Again, it's not up to us. We hope. We hope that the universe is kind enough to us to have us, you know, um, go through our future in that, in that more intelligent way. All right. Um, that's all we have time for tonight. Uh, again, catch our show, Myth of Free Will, 11 o'clock every Wednesday, Channel 56 in Manhattan, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And uh, call in because it's a call-in show. It's live. And if you're, you know, if you're not in Manhattan, catch us on the, um, on the Internet. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.